All right, here we're at section 1.5, properties of real numbers. So the commutative property is the first one we're going to talk about. We kind of looked at this a little bit earlier. When you're adding or multiplying, changing the order, the physical order in which your numbers appear will still give you the same result. So we have what is known the commutative property of addition. This is when A and B, in both cases for adding and multiplying, they're real numbers. A plus B is the same as B plus A. I physically change their order. And this holds true for multiplication as well. So this means the full name of the property, commutative property of addition, commutative property of multiplication. You have to see the work done and recognize the property. So if you see a physical change in order, then you know it's the commutative property. The associative property of addition and the associative property of multiplication. Now what you're going to do is the physical order doesn't change, but you use grouping symbols to change which operations are done. And this will still give you the same result. So let's look at the associative property for addition. Physical appearance. A is first, B is second, C is third. But because you put parentheses around A and B, you have to add these two numbers first, then add the C. Is equal to A is first, B is second, C is third, but there's parentheses around B plus C indicating you have to do B plus C, then add the A. And the same is true with multiplication. All Everything's being multiplied. You have parentheses changing the orders in which you multiply, but the physical appearance of your numbers or variables do not change. Distributive property. You have A, B, and C. They're all real numbers. If you have A multiplied to a set of parentheses, you take the A and you multiply it both to the B and to the C, and you still add them. Now, the variable A or this number could be in the front of the parentheses or in the back. It still gives you the same thing. All right, A is multiplied to B. They just happen to write it as BA, but your commutative property tells you you could write it as AB. CA, same as AC. And if there's a minus sign in the set of parentheses, you keep a minus sign between the terms. Your, whoops, back up here. Your identity property for addition and multiplication. Identity means you're going to add something that doesn't change the value's identity. Or I'm going to multiply by a number that doesn't change the value's identity. So the identity property of addition is adding a zero. Zero is the additive identity. Identity property of multiplication is when you multiply by 1. So A plus 0 or 0 plus A, it's still an A. A times 1 or 1 times A, it's still A. So, examples. Which shows the associative property of addition? Well, the associative property of addition, remember, the order stays the same. A, B, C, A, B, C. There's parentheses that are changing around a different pair of items being added together. So we're looking for order, nope, that's a zero. Order changed, so it's going to have to be C. 5, 4, 1, 5, 4, 1. Parentheses around the first plus sign of 5 and 4. Parentheses around the second plus sign. So our answer is C because the grouping of addition is being changed by the parentheses. Associative property is always parentheses. Number two, which property is shown here? So I have 5x plus 10 equals 10 plus 5x. I physically change the order of 5x and 10 around the addition sign. So I'm changing the order that's commutative. Since I changed it around the plus sign, that's the commutative property of addition, and that's E. Again, you're changing the order of the terms around the plus sign. All right, number three, what's the property shown here and why? Okay, let's see. We have 2, 10, 
b. Everything's being multiplied. 2 times 10b. Notice the order is the same, but again, the parentheses are changing around a different multiplication symbol. So this is the associative property of multiplication. Again, grouping multiplication is changed by the parentheses. Number four, let's see. Well, we have parentheses. Let's see. Parentheses are around 5y plus 6, then times a 2. Now it's 2 times the same binomial 5y plus 6. So what we are doing here is we're physically changing the order of the parentheses and the number 2 around a multiplication symbol. So that's our commutative property of multiplication. All right, five, which property is shown here? We have 3a plus 7 in parentheses multiplied by 10. Then all of a sudden we have two tens, one tens being multiplied to 3a, the other 10 is multiplied to the 7. This is your distributive property. That's a, because the 10 was multiplied to both terms in the parentheses. Let's see, six, which property is shown here? We have... 2 plus 8p times 3, the 3 is multiplied to the 2, and to the 8p, another distributive property. 3 was multiplied to everything on the inside. All right, number 7. You have a negative in front of the parentheses. You have to use the distributive property. This is like having a negative 1 in front of the parentheses, so we multiply the negative 1 to both terms. That changes it to negative 5y minus g. Number 8, negative 4 times the parentheses. Again, distributive property. Negative 4 times negative 8k. Negative 4 times negative 3. Oops, I forgot my answer disappeared there. So that's going to give me a negative times a negative, which will be a positive 32k. A negative 4 times a negative 3, that will give me a positive 12. All right, more distributive property right here. Distribute the negative 4. Now, so you don't have to write this out. We have a shortcut. You circle the negative 4. You put a little asterisk here to indicate you're multiplying and draw arrows to where you're going to multiply the negative 4 to. So negative 4 times a negative 2x is a positive 8x. Negative 2 times positive 2, negative 8 or minus 8. B, 6 times 3 terms. Well, that's 6. Circle it. It has to be multiplied to all 3 terms. 6 times 8 is 48. W squared. 6 times W plus 6W. 6 times a positive 5 plus 30. Again, just like we did in number 7 here, that's a negative 1. Circle it. You're going to multiply it to everything on the inside. And if you notice what happened up here, they were positive on the inside, they became negative. So all the signs changed to their opposite. Positive 3t squared minus 4t minus 9. We can even have fractions here. Multiply the 6 sevenths to each fraction. So 6 times 5 is 30. 7 times 8, 56. So 30 over 56x. 6 times 3 is 18, 7 times 5 is 35. So I distributed the 6 sevenths. Notice I didn't try to do any canceling. I don't want to cancel a 2 and the 6 and a 2 and an 8 because I don't want to change this to 3 sevenths, multiplying it to this fraction because I didn't have an opportunity to cancel with a 2 in the factor of 5. So straight multiply through, cancel once the parentheses are gone. Now, since they're both even, we reduce by 2, 15 over 28x, minus 18 over 35. Okay, number 10, we have some distributive properties and some combining of like terms to do. 5, you get multiplied in, so that's going to be 5 times 2x is 10x. 5 times minus 4y will be minus 20y. This minus sign gets distributed, so it's going to be minus x minus 3y. We combine like terms. 10x minus 1x, that will be 9x. 
minus 20y minus 3y minus 23y. Number 11, distribute 1,000, multiply it to both these numbers. So remember here, this is a multiple of 10, three zeros. Move the decimal point three places to the right. 540, 1, 2, 3, 80x. Distribute the 6, and now distribute the minus 6. So 6 times 2x minus 2, 12x minus 12. Then take the sign with the 6, minus 6x, minus 42. Combine our like terms, 12x minus 6x is 6x, minus 12, minus 42, the signs are the same, so it's going to stay minus, add the numbers, 60, excuse me, 54, not 64. All right, 13, distribute the 4, 8x minus 28y, distribute the minus sign, minus x, minus 5y. Combine like terms, we're going to get 7x and a minus 33y. Number 14, we can combine these two terms, 8c plus 6c. If you want to make that 14c, great. Now take the minus 6 and distribute it. We're going to get minus 30c, minus 42. Now we combine the two c terms here. 30 is bigger, so it's going to be a minus. And 30 minus 14 is 16, so minus or negative 16c minus 42. 15, distribute the minus and distribute the minus 2. So this becomes negative 4x plus 1, just a sign chain. And then negative 2 times x is minus 2x. Negative 2 times 2 is minus 4, and we'll combine like terms. So we have signs are the same. Add the 4 and the 2 and keep the sign. Negative 6x. 1 minus 4, keep the minus, 4 minus 1, minus 3. Divide and explain your answer. Well, this is undefined. Again, we talked about you cannot divide by 0. All right, 17. Let's see, Kosenga bought a 20-pound turkey for his family. Thanksgiving dinner and wants to know what time to put the turkey into the oven. He wants to allow 15 minutes per pound for cooking time. All right, well, we're going to have 20 pounds being multiplied by 15, or we can change 15 minutes and change it into a decimal hour of 0.25, or you could reduce this to one-fourth of an hour. So 20 times 0.25, so again, remember the zero, bumps the decimal point over. 2 times 2.5 is 5 hours. Isabel's shampoo sells for $4.99 per bottle at the grocery store. At the warehouse store, the same shampoo is sold in a, as a four-pack for $18.96. To find the cost of $4, four bottles at $4.99 at the grocery store, Notice that 4.99 is really close to 5, so we could say 5 minus 0 0.01. Multiply 4 times the 5 and then times the 0 0.01. Using the distributive property, we would get 20 minus 0 0.04. All right, then subtract the price at the warehouse store, 18.96, to see what the the difference is. So 20, 4 times 5, 4 times 0 0.01 minus 0 0.04. You can add up these two negatives. That's going to give me a minus 19. So 20 minus 19 is a $1 savings. Now, don't get me wrong. You can go to your calculator and crunch it out that way. You could go 4 times 4.99 and then subtract the 18.96 and still come up with the same $1 savings. All right, 19 divided, 0 divided by 11 over 6. Well, we don't divide by fractions. We multiply by its reciprocal. So times 6 over 11 to a 0 is automatically 0. Now, 20 over here, a different story. <clears throat> now we're dividing by 0. It doesn't matter what this fraction is. You can't divide by 0, because again, that's like saying times 1 over 0. That's undefined. You can't divide by 0. 
And that wraps up our 1.5.